Hello, everybody, and welcome to the ET Considers Everything podcast for Thursday, December 15th, 2016. On this edition, I'll be taking a look at the Thursday night football matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks from Century Link Field in Seattle, Washington. I'll also be taking a look at some NBA headlines from last night with LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Kyrie Irving sitting out the game last night against the Memphis Grizzlies. Also be taking a look at Russell Westbrook and him not getting a triple-double once again last night. It was the second straight game for him not getting a triple-double after doing so in seven straight games before that. Also be taking a look at some college football headlines that are taking place today and some other news. So let's get going with this podcast, ladies and gentlemen. First, let's talk about the Thursday night football match matchup, which is taking place tonight between the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. The Los Angeles Rams come into this matchup losing eight of their last nine games, and on Monday they fired their head coach, Jeff Fisher. Interim head coach will be John, Fos- John Fossil, who is the son of Jim Fossil, who previously coached the New York Giants. He will be the head coach for the rest of the season as they look for a permanent replacement this offseason. The Seattle Seahawks are also coming off a big defeat this past Sunday as the Green Bay Packers defeated them 38-10 to at Lambeau Field. So the Seattle Seahawks will be looking for redemption as they look to clinch the NFC West tonight. They will do so with a victory over the Los Angeles Rams tonight if they do so. So good luck to both teams tonight. My prediction for the game is the Seattle Seahawks 30 and the LA Rams 13. College football headlines to report on today. Lane Kiffin has landed his first big recruit at Florida Atlantic University. He has committed to quarterback DeAndre Johnson, who previously played at Mississippi State Valley College, the uh, program that is on Last Chance U, which is on Netflix. So congratulations to DeAndre and Coach Kiffin. I wish them nothing but the best. DeAndre Johnson was involved in a domestic dispute two years ago while he was getting ready to be the new quarterback for Florida State University, as many people will remember. But uh, he has turned his life around since then and has gone to junior college at Mississippi Valley State University, and now he is back at Florida Atlantic University with Lane Kiffin. So we'll see how that goes, no doubt about it. Wake Forest has also made some news here in the past few days. They have fired their radio broadcaster for tipping plays to the University of Louisville. University of Louisville's head coach Bobby Petrino has denied the accusations that they were tipped off of plays from the Wake Forest radio announcer, but since has softened that stance and has said that they have received plays from the past, but they did not use them in the game. The athletic director, Tom Jarrett, says that he hopes that this does not take away the attention of his team moving forward, getting ready to play in the Citrus Bowl coming up on December 30th against LSU. We'll see how this story unfolds over the next few days, but this has been big headlines today, and it's very sad to see Tommy Elrod, the man that um, decided to tip off these plays to the University of Louisville, deciding to um, turn his back on his radio announcing career from Wake Forest. That's a sad story, and that's something that I do not um, take very well pride in, and I hope that he um, gets his comeuppance. And, you know, he I hope that he get, does get a second chance because everybody deserves a chance, second chance. But this accusation right here and these um, fallacies are very wrong, and you definitely have to take something into this um, with uh, without a uh, hard position. You definitely have to take a hard position on it, and you got to take a look at it for sure. So the NCAA will investigate this. The University of Louisville and Wake Forest will also continue to investigate this as time goes on as well. Moving on to NBA headlines last night. The uh, Cleveland Cavaliers were without three, their big three last night. LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love all rested last night in their game against the Memphis Grizzlies. The Memphis Grizzlies defeated them. And this has been a topic all morning today on the sports shows. They have been uh, discussing this at length throughout the day, and it's something that you know the fans are very upset about for sure because a lot of fans do pay a lot of hard-earned money to go 
watch these superstars play, and when they don't get a chance to see their favorite basketball players play, it really dampers the spirit. They had a call this morning from a young lady on the Dan Patrick so show who took her 10-year-old son to go watch the Cleveland Cavaliers play, hoping to see LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love all play. But uh, Kevin Love, LeBron James, and Kyrie Irving did not make the trip to Memphis, and they did not play. So it was a tough result for Catherine from Tennessee, and uh, you know, I wish all the best for her and her family. I'm sure it was still a fun trip, but it was something that they were all looking forward to seeing. You know, LeBron James is the best basketball player in the world, and they definitely wanted the chance to see LeBron, but they didn't get the chance to, and that's something that a lot of fans will pay their hard-earned money to do so, but they didn't get the chance, and that's sad. So we'll see how the NBA takes hold of this. If I was the NBA and I were to make a decision on this, I would make sure that the fans would be refunded 50% of their ticket price that they paid because these athletes did not play the star players and you know compensate them for their trip you know at least give them 50 percent off their ticket and give them a chance to enjoy the game with not as much cost attached to the trip i think that would be one way to fix this problem and it should be a very interesting topic to discuss over the next few days across sports radio for sure Moving on from NHL, last night we had the Wednesday night rivalry doubleheader. The Boston Bruins a loose lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins last night 4-3 in overtime, and the Philadelphia Flyers defeated Colorado Avalanche 4-3. Both of those games were on NBC Sports Network last night. The Bruins and the Penguins game was one of the best games I've seen in a long time. There was a lot of goals attached in that game. But the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins end up coming up on top, and they remain at the top of the standings in the Atlantic Division in the Eastern Conference. So we'll see how the NHL season continues to play out. Coming up in the Winter Classic in a couple weeks, we'll have the uh, Chicago Blackhawks taking on the St. Louis Blues in Bush Stadium at St. Louis. That'll be on January 2nd, and on January 1st, it will be the Centennial Classic between the Detroit Red Wings and the Toronto uh, Maple Leafs. That will take place in Toronto at the Sky Dome. So both of those games should be a lot of fun to watch. I love outdoor hockey. It just takes you back to being a kid, to going outside, playing in the snow, and going out ice skating and being with your family. It's always a lot of fun to see how those games play out for sure. Moving on today, MLB news to report on. The World Baseball Classic will take place in early March. It will take place during the first, second, and third weeks of March. And eight teams will take place in it, I believe. It might be up to 16 this year. I'll have to pay close attention to that as the uh, World Baseball Classic approaches, but the favorites to win it, as always, are the Dominican Republic. Cuba is always a team to look at, out for, and China as well. China and the Dominican Republic are really my picks to do well this year in the World Baseball Classic. We'll just have to see how those teams play and how those teams fare out as the World Baseball Classic approaches in March. That will take away a lot of the spring training abilities for the teams in Major League Baseball this year. But it's going to be fun to see how the uh, players from Major League Baseball adapt to playing team baseball for the country. It's always a great uh, pride thing to, you know, be in with your, your country and represent your country in a World Baseball tournament. And with that, that's going to do it for this edition of the ET Considers Everything podcast for Thursday, December 15th, 2016. If y'all don't mind, like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, I'll keep you posted on sports news as I get them across my tablet and across my Twitter and Facebook pages. For now, this is ET Eric Tyler Mullins reporting from Pound, Virginia. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you very much for watching, liking the video, and subscribing to the YouTube channel. Later.